Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Navigraph. In this tutorial I will be covering how to set up a flight in Navigraph um, and which charts you need to uh, be looking at as well as a basic explanation of SIDS and STARS. So the way you set up a flight is we come up here uh, and we go add new flight and we call it Again, yeah, so we're flying from Stansted. If I can spell Stansted, Stansted to Budapest, for example. Uh, you can enter some routing in, it's optional, it really doesn't have too much of a bearing other than it'll plot a nice little route across there for you to have a look at. But we'll focus on uh, the main bits. So, what we need to enter now is our departure ICAO for Stansted, that is EGSS, and for Budapest, of course, as LHBP. And as an alternative, we'll use Vienna, which is uh, L O W W. And we just save that. That will then, on the uh, drop down to the left here, uh, bring up Stansted to Budapest. So, we just click on that. And then we can view charts. They may need to download, but we can view the charts. And we already have the charts on there. Uh, so the next step I'll be taking you through is the charts you'll be using for departure and the charts you will be using for arrival. Okay, so I'll now take you through the charts you'll want to be focusing on for your departure. So we're departing out of London Stances. Let's go and have a look at the, the charts. Um, we have a couple of uh, menus across the top here, reference charts, again that's not really uh, relevant unless you really want to go into super realism, we'll stick to the very basics you'll need. Stars, um, which is uh, I, think, I believe standard terminal arrival route uh, is obviously for your arrival, uh, so we don't need to worry about those. Same with the uh, runway charts as that's for approach landing and we have taxi which is a ground charts and other airport information and of course we have the standard instrument departure charts which we'll come to in a minute. So let's go through the taxi charts and I've already highlighted you have a whole load of ones and you can click and highlight relevant ones. Uh, which you can see in the pane on the right here. So I've already done that. So let's have a look at our taxi charts. So this um, just gives us where all the gates are, which is quite handy, obviously. Not so much for departure, but more for arrival. So we'll come back to this in more detail in arrival. More relevant to your departure is your uh, taxi uh, charts. So um, what we'll have here is you can also, by clicking on this little pointer here, activate moving maps, and if you've got it linked in Real Simulator, works in P3D and X-Plane, you'll get this little icon here which will tell you exactly where you are, which is very useful for obviously finding a way to where you should be, especially at larger airports and especially as well if you're flying online. Uh, so what irrelevant information do we have here on this Jefferson chart? Obviously we have the uh, frequencies and we have the airport elevations, runway length, and obviously the taxiway map is about most of the information you're going to need here. Um, let's go straight along to the SID. Now, if you remember from my SimBrief tutorial, or if you have seen my SimBrief tutorial, you'll we'll see that I uh, set up a Stansted to Budapest flight, and it gave us the Clacton for Sierra departure. Uh, so as you can see, this is for a departure from a runway four only and um, basically the information that's relevant is here is transition altitude which is when you set your uh, QNH to the standard um, setting when you reach that altitude and also you have information relevant here such as a max 250 knots below 10,000 that's otherwise authorized by ATC you also have height restrictions here which you must adhere to unless instructed otherwise by ATC now how do you choose what SID you want to use well that's pretty straightforward because if you um, look at your flight plan your SID should ultimately take you to the first waypoint on your flight plan and um, the first waypoint on our flight plan was Clacton so obviously we want a SID that reflects that name and usually the SIDs are named for the waypoints they ultimately uh, end up at for example obviously the waypoint is Clacton and you've got the Clacton 4S departure 
Uh, so as you can see, if you follow this along, we ultimately end up at collect. And if you choose the wrong SID, by the way, uh, you can end up with discontinuities and really weird routing. Um, so that just about covers everything you need to know, or the basics you need to know on these charts for the uh, departure. Now let's have a look now at the uh, arrival charts. So we come down to the Budapest charts and the first thing we want to do is uh, have a look at the uh, star chart and again you want to choose a star that begins at your last waypoint on your route and obviously takes you to the correct runway. So our last waypoint on our uh, route was Rutol, which you can see is where the uh, star begins. And we are landing at um, 31 right at Budapest, which if you follow this down here, brings you around to there. Again, similar to the, um, similar to the SID, you've got obviously um, altitude restrictions and speed restrictions which you again you must adhere to unless otherwise directed by ATC. Um, you've also got airport elevation as well and pay attention to things like this for example because number four it says on downwind expect vectors to final uh, because in reality you very rarely fly uh, a full star to the letter, often or not at some point ATC will vector you otherwise. So if you're flying online, be very aware for that. If you're just using default ATC, well default ATC doesn't even support stars. Uh, if you're using a program like Pro ATC, it will expect you to fly the star to the letter, which on a star like this is okay but there's some other airports manchester i can think of where the stars are a little bit weird if you literally fly it fully but i won't go into that now now it says expect uh, expect a shortcut so basically what you can do is when you reach uh, bp031 or you can go into your fmc and you can just delete out all the waypoints between uh, b31 and uh, sorry bp31 and bp30 and that affect shortcut for you um you don't have to, but it's just something you can do because this, trust me, flying all the way out here and back is a stupidly long approach. So I always, whether I'm flying online or offline, um, put in the shortcut because typically if you're flying online, you'll be given it anyway. And if you're flying offline, it'll just save you a whole heap of time. Um, that's about all there is to uh, cover. Obviously on these charts, you also have relevant hold points. Um, and again, which detail the, uh, the the direction you should be flying and altitude restrictions sometimes it also gives you the the length but not on this one and then we said we're landing 31 right so if we come onto our approach charts and we can come down let's say we're flying ILS 31 right here so what have we got here well again Oops. We have the transition altitude at which point you set your uh, QNH to the local QNH, not the standard QNH. And the next thing you want to do is tune your, if you're doing an ILS approach, tune it to the ILS frequency, which you'll find here, which is 109.5. Just be warned, if you're using P3D or FSX, the database is quite old and some of the ILS frequencies will not match what you have on your chart. So always, if you're using those two simulators, go onto your map. Um, options and click on the airport just to double check cross reference make sure the ILS um, uh, frequencies are the same because some will be different and you'll be <laughs> flying in you'll have looked at your charts and thought, okay it's that frequency you, you put it in it's like oh why is it not following the ILS um, so what do we have here so we have initial approach fixes now what these tend to be is that when you put in a star as well as a star sometimes it'll ask you for something called a transition and the transition for example i know for a fact that the router uh, 4l is that the router 4l arrival we have uses a transition of the gat um, which is also called the initial approach fix so on budapest there's only one even though it has this one over here it's uh, i've never seen that come up before on some airports there's quite a few so you can use this chart to work out which transition um you should be using the great thing of something a program like pro atc 
at is it will actually tell you what transition, so it saves you a bit of time. Or also, we see information um, about the actual ILS uh, glide slope and localizer, so we want to be intercepting it at a height of 2,500 feet, and then you can see the distance um, from the uh, from the airport as well that you will begin your descent on the glide slope. Other information down at the bottom here gives you your decision heights for various categories of aircraft. Um, so for example if you're flying a CAT-1 approach in a 737 or an Airbus A320, uh, the category for that by the way is category C, um, then your uh, decision height is to one. I won't go into too much details about the, the categories, but typically the uh, the higher the letter, the bigger the aircraft, as far as I recall. Um, just one other thing to point out on here is obviously you also have your missed approach procedure. Uh, so for example, here it says missed approach on an RNAV approach, climb to 3,000 feet, and then when you pass a 900 feet turn right there as follows over to the um, the, the, uh, the TPS waypoint and then it will probably route you back in round and then you'll probably come across here and back down again it's not often I've had to fly uh, go around in fact I never think I have had to fly go around at Budapest but yeah that's just something to be aware of on this chart as well you also have various things detailing um, the height of the terrain around as well so that basically covers um your uh, approach charts and then coming back to the taxi charts lastly um obviously again much in the same way as your departure you can use this and the moving map feature again is really handy on this to find your way to your gate and unfortunately the uh, ground map with the um the gate numbers doesn't support moving maps which is a bit frustrating so it can be a little bit of a trial and error you have to try and uh, match it up to your best but there are other programs that can help you out with that namely GSX for example where you can um, get the equipment set up on your gate so you'll be able to see it more clearly mm. and that really just about covers how you use uh, Navigraph and the uh, charts to um, complete your flight so thank you very much for watching this tutorial as usual don't forget if you have any questions queries whatever leave something in the comments uh, check out my Facebook page uh, and like and subscribe uh, so um, you'll be able to see the future content that I'll be uh, bringing you I'll be doing further tutorials of course live streams uh, arrivals and anything else I can think of so I'll see you next time